Welcome to this episode of guest lecture on the history of anatomy. Anatomy is the basic for all medical subjects and it has got a great history behind. History of anatomy is alongside the history of mankind itself. In the different phases of civilization as ages rolled on, anatomy also improved day by day and many scientists have contributed to the development of anatomy. Anatomy comes from the word anatom which means to cut. So basically anatomy involved dissection and dissection was not allowed in different parts of the world due to religious beliefs, customs and local sentiments. Against all such odds, the scientists have struggled to learn anatomy themselves and to teach others and also the mankind about the structure and function of the human body. So in this lecture, I will try to recap some of the developments with the scientists and what happened in the world in different stages of civilization. History of anatomy is prehistoric and post renaissance in such segments you can know how this has developed over a period of time. So as we listened to the introduction of anatomy, how anatomy evolved, we can classify from the dawn of civilization to the 5th century BC Maybe this can be considered as a prehistoric time and then came the civilizations across the world, the Chinese, Indus, Egyptian, Greek, Roman. With the dawn of civilization, learning of anatomy started with the art of killing. The prehistoric man had the knowledge of vital structure which helped them to kill the animals. Now coming to the Indian scenario, even Veda Vyas, the sage, has described a little bit of the science of medicine and also the anatomy. For example, in the Indian context, the Rig Veda discusses about heart, lungs, stomach and kidneys. If you look at Garbha Upanishad, it has discussed embryology and some of the terms are seen there. Buddha Buddha refers to, refers to the seventh day of the embryo and the fifteenth day embryo is called as Panda. The body is wrapped in grass as described by Shushruta Samhita for the sake of dissection, preparation of the body and it should be placed in a cage for the decomposition to set in. After 7 days of decomposition, the skin should be peeled off by a grass called as Kusa grass and the internal structures should be examined. In the post Vedic period, in the history of Indian medicine, Ayurveda evolved and contributed. 
the sushruta and shakra they have contributed to the human anatomy and they have described the sarira sthana sushruta is considered the father of plastic surgery and we all know that he did rhinoplasty reconstruction of the nose the nose is the pride of a uh, individual and he has helped reconstruction of the nose after injuries apart from that he has also described 300 surgical procedures and mentioned 120 instruments in his book shushruta samhita describes the weight and length of the tongue it also mentions the length of the intestines it mentions the number of bones joints and the main blood vessels the charaka samhita it divided the human body into six parts four limbs one head and one trunk when we look at the scenario in egypt they practiced mummification and they had the knowledge to remove the brain using a hook through the nose they have also described the meninges and the brain convolutions the heartbeat and pulse counting intellectual development in egypt Hierophilus and Erastratus in Greece Hippocrates Aristotle and in Rome Rugus Ephesus and Sorenus of Ephesus they have all contributed for the development of science Hippocrates who lived in the 4th century BC is considered the father of medicine he is a Greek philosopher he propounded the hippocratic oath he had vast knowledge of the bones and demonstrated cranial sutures alcmeon in the 5th century he postulated that the head can be the location of reasoning and intelligence until then the heart was considered as the seat of intelligence and reasoning he also observed a communication between the brain and the eyes maybe the optic nerve he observed a communication between the mouth and the ears and this may be the eustachian tube which he had identified the father of anatomy is hierophilus and he lived in 300 bc he dissected the bodies of the criminals because that was the only thing available to them to dissect and learn he differentiated the cerebrum from cerebellum he also described duodenum aristotle used animal dissections and the first known account of embryology is through him he experimented through the chick embryo he named the aorta and distinguished other arteries and veins he was the tutor to the great king alexander the great galen he is the man associated with identifying the circulation he considered the best physician after hippocrates the most influential writer of all times on the medical subjects and as i mentioned he is the person who described the circulation in detail but little later some of his findings were questioned by andreas vesalius then there was a fresh air and light that came for learning anatomy revival of thoughts and ideas occurred the invention of the printing press contributed to the development of anatomy the relationship between artist and the anatomist was symbiotic even 
the islam community contributed for the development of anatomy the knowledge about our structures razors described the bones muscles heart and he identified seven cranial nerves and 31 spinal nerves in the year 1286 there is a reference of the first autopsy performed to identify the cause of death back then professors were held in high esteem the dissections happened in galleries and the professors were in academic robe and they were seated in throne like what you see mundino dissected the bodies of executed criminals and he wrote the dissection manual in the year 1316 and you see the illustrations of the dissections seen in his manual the man who revolutionized the study of anatomy the father of modern anatomy andreas vesalius and he advocated dissection for the students he realized that there were flaw in the galen's book and he proved it by doing dissection Leonardo da Vinci's drawings also contributed to the learning of anatomy and De Humani Corporis Fabrica is his work. Vesalius was replaced by Fabricius in the University of Padua. Fabricius discovered the presence of one way valves in the veins. and he called them little doors when we talk about anatomy we should also remember about histology the learning of the micro structures the father of histology is marzello malfighi and that was possible because of the invention of the microscope by leuven hock william harvey is the father of physiology and he has described about circulation and showed that function can be inferred from the structure so if you study histology you should always correlate the structure with function even in the smallest of the structures described like goblet cells what is its function why the goblet cell is present and all these things you should correlate and study and then only you will find anatomy interesting the heart contracts actively and relaxes passively the atria contract first and then the ventricles the heart is the organ which pumps the blood these were all the findings of william harvey then there is a very interesting character in anatomy we can never afford to forget him you can afford to forget your uncle but not carbuncle in diabetes likewise you cannot afford to forget this name henry gray he lived very short life on this earth from 1827 to 1861 the british anatomist worked as a lecturer in st george hospital medical school in london and his book is revered till date anatomy had to have a very adventurous history and there were the night doctors there was a growing demand for the dissection of the human bodies so what happened there were robbers who were stealing the buried cadavers and they sold it for a price the practice of robbing the graves of freshly buried persons became rampant in the 18th and 19th century the grave robbers were called as body snatchers and resurrectionist when talking about the grave robbers we cannot avoid but think of these two people the burke and harry murders 
William Harry and William Burke murdered 16 people and they sold them for a price to the medical school. This crime came to light and Burke was executed on the 28th of January 1829. The method they killed was called as Burking and you will study all these things in detail in the forensic textbooks. On 29th January 1829, his body was publicly dissected and tickets were sold for witnessing this dissection. Professor Alexander Monroe dipped his quill pen into Burke's blood and wrote, This is written with the blood of William Burke, who was hanged in Edinburgh. The blood was taken from his head. Burke's skeleton, even today, is displayed in the anatomy museum of the Edinburgh Medical School. His skin was used to make valets and they were sold for very high prices. When we come to the 20th and the 21st century, there are advances in the medical field and we have new avenues to learn anatomy and anatomy was no longer the teaching of the dead. The dead teaches the living was replaced by the living teaching the living. The ultrasonogram, the CT scan, MRI have all contributed for learning the radiological anatomy and this definitely helps in learning anatomy much better for the relations and other applied aspects as well. Now, when we are talking about the history of anatomy, we should all remember this person Pandit Madhusudan Gupta who on 10th January 1836 broke all traditions and superstitions and dissected the first human dead body in India. So he goes into the record as the first person to do dissection in, the, in, in India. So, we have come across various scientists from east to west who have contributed to learning anatomy themselves and also teaching others by their illustrations and also their textbooks. So we have heard so much from the history how anatomy has developed from ages past till the present 21st century and how various scientists have struggled to bring us the knowledge of our body and its function and hence let us learn from the past, live in the present and believe in the future because nobody knows what is in store for us and I thank you for your patient listening and I wish you all the very best as you proceed to learn the various structures in the human body in the subject of anatomy. Thank you very much.